A bunch of shows are returning with new batches of episodes. And of course, there's also the usual eclectic selection of movies and licensed TV series to help take your mind off the late summer heat. Let's dig into every notable new Netflix viewing choice coming your way in August. Otherhood will come with a little extra baggage when it drops August 2nd, but don't hold that against it. One of its stars, Felicity Huffman, is one of the celebrities caught up in the college admission scandal that's been headline news lately. It's safe to say that Netflix is probably hoping said scandal won't be at the forefront of your mind when you see the cast list. Otherhood stars Huffman, Angela Bassett, and Patricia Arquette as a trio of moms who decide to take a road trip to the Big Apple to reconnect with their adult sons, making important discoveries about their families, their friends, and themselves alone along the way. The presence of the always excellent Bassett alone is enough to get our attention, and the movie marks the directorial debut of Cindy Chupac, who has worked as a writer and producer on TV series including Modern Family and Sex and the City. The trailer promises a funny, heartfelt, and moving little film that deserves a watch, even if one of its stars isn't doing so hot on the PR front this year. Dear White People has been a hilarious, thought-provoking delight for its first two seasons, and for the third, debuting August 2nd, things are about to get real. The series is a look at race relations from the point of view of a group of black students at a prestigious, mostly white, fictional university. It stars Logan Browning as Sam, the host of the titular radio show, Duran Horton as Lionel, an aspiring journalist who has extra hurdles to surmount as a gay man, and Antoinette Robertson as Coco, a social butterfly attempting to fit into her lily-white environment. Previous seasons have focused on Sam and Lionel's efforts to discover the identity of the mysterious leader of Order X, a shadowy secret society. And at the conclusion of Season 2, it was revealed to be the series' narrator, Giancarlo Esposito. I see you've been watching closely. Esposito figures pretty heavily in the trailer for Season 3, so we can expect to learn more about Order X along with Sam and Lionel. No Good Nick is among the weirdest sitcoms on television, and we mean that in the best way possible. Part 1 of the show's first season introduced us to the oh-so-average Thompson family – Dad Ed, Mom Liz, Son Jeremy, and Daughter Molly – who discover that they have a previously unknown distant relative, young Nick, whom they welcome into their lives. But all is not as it seems. Nick is a budding con artist, and in addition to putting over a long con on the Thompsons, she's also playing her foster parents in the service of a scheme cooked up by her imprisoned father, Tony. Part 1 was equal parts hilarity, intrigue, and suspense, and Part 2 promises to thicken the plot even further when it debuts August 5th. It's been a long wait for the third season of GLOW, but the recently released trailer for Season 3 promises that it'll be worth it when the season finally hits August 9th. The new batch of episodes sees the action move to Las Vegas, as the gorgeous ladies of wrestling take their act to the Fan Tan Hotel and Casino, under the watchful eye of an entertainment director played by Gina Davis. Viva Las Vegas! Season 2 left plenty of plot threads to be picked up, and star Alison Brie has teased that the new outing will feature a deepening of the friendship between her character, Ruth Zoya the Destroya Wilder, and Debbie Liberty Bell Egan. The show's deft blend of comedy with thoughtful explorations of unconventional relationships has always been at the center of its appeal, and the new season looks to give its fans the most hilarious, heartfelt outing yet. Dexter's Michael C. Hall returns to the small screen August 9th in the original feature In the Shadow of the Moon, and he's just one welcome component of the thriller's amazing cast. Leading the film is Boyd Holbrook, who portrays a Philadelphia police detective on the trail of a serial killer whose crimes seem to defy any logical explanation. Hall will appear as a fellow detective who is also the brother-in-law of Holbrook's character. The film is directed by Jim Mickle, who turned in an amazingly atmospheric thriller in 2013's We Are What We Are. Additional plot details details are sparse, but something tells us that's for the best, as this sounds like a thriller best watched going in cold. The story of every 90s kid's favorite anxiety-ridden wallaby continues with the feature Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling. The animated movie is going meta for its return. Rocco and friends Heifer, Filbert, and Spunky have been lost in space since the Nickelodeon series' conclusion in 1996, and they're going to have a few problems adjusting to our radically different modern world. Rocco, however, believes that this new society can be redeemed through the power of nostalgia. See how our heroes react to smartphones, food trucks, and superhero movies when Rocco's Modern Life Static Static Cling drops on August 9th. The 21st century is a very dangerous century. 
Invader Zim was one of the most insane offerings ever fielded by Nickelodeon, and it amassed a sizable fan base during its run from 2001 to 2006. The animated series centered on Zim, an alien from the planet Earth, and his attempts to conquer Earth with the aid of his not-so-reliable robot assistant Gurr. Opposing them is Dib, a pint-sized paranormal investigator. Despite its relatively short run, the show has remained popular, spawning its own fan convention, a comic book series, and a plethora of merchandise. Leave it to Netflix, then, to give fans a feature film, Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, debuting August 16th. Most of the original cast will return to reprise their roles, including Richard Horvitz as Zim, Ricky Simons as Gurr, and Andy Berman as Dib. Series creator Jonan Vasquez also returned to co-script the project. Fans of the true crime drama series Mindhunter have been waiting with bated breath for the second season since the first arrived in 2017. On August 16th, they'll finally get to see the continuing story of FBI agents Holden Ford and Bill Tench, who forged new methods of capturing serial killers in the 70s. The pair are the first to interview such criminals while in captivity to find out what makes them tick, and the 1977 set first season saw them cross paths with a number of real-life monsters, including the notorious co-ed killer Ed Kemper. Season 2 will take place at after a bit of a time jump, focusing on a rash of killings in Atlanta, which took place between 1979 and 1981. In what is sure to be a highlight of the new batch of episodes, Ford and Tench will have occasion to interview infamous family leader Charles Manson. If you've missed the comedy stylings of Marlon Wayans, then Netflix has a movie just for you. Sex Tuplets focuses on Alan, an adoptee who hits the road in search of his birth mother, only to discover that he was born a sex tuplet and that he has five identical brothers. All of the brothers, of course, are played by Wayans. The movie reunites Wayans with Brescia Webb, the co-star of his short-lived sitcom Marlon, and the film is directed by longtime Wayans collaborator Michael Titus, who directed A Haunted House and its sequel. Wayans is a man who knows what his audience wants, Wants. And if you're a fan, you won't need us to tell you to set aside August 16th to check out Sex Tuplets. Here's a little item that's been nearly four decades in the making. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance is a series serving as a prequel to Jim Henson's 1982 fantasy feature The Dark Crystal. The movie used pioneering puppet work to tell the tale of a struggle to find a balance between light and dark on the mysterious planet of Thra. Age of Resistance will follow the journey of three Gelflings, voiced by Taron Edgerton, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Natalie Emanuel, as they set out to discover the secret behind the power of the evil Skeksis. The series blends the original signature puppetry with lovingly rendered CGI, and its stellar voice cast includes nearly too much talent to list. Even those unfamiliar with Henson's classic film will want to get in on this one. As in July, the new action offerings are few in August. Fortunately, they're all well worth checking out. Many consider Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown to be among his finest works. If you're more in the mind-bending head trip mood, there's the Wachowski's Jupiter Ascending, a blast of pure, unadulterated sci-fi action craziness featuring Mila Kunis and Channing Tatum. There's also 2004's The Punisher, featuring Thomas Jane in his first go-around as the legendary Marvel anti-hero, the well-received Jason Statham actioner The Bank Job, and Boyka Undisputed, the fourth film in the bone-crushing martial arts series. When it comes to horror, the August pickings are, unfortunately, even slimmer. Only two new releases will show up during the month, the ultra-crazy Daniel Radcliffe-led Horns and Panic Room, David Fitcher's claustrophobic thriller starring Jodie Foster as a woman trapped in her own home. Sylvester Stallone is the main attraction among the August drama offerings, as the first five films in the Rocky series will be available for streaming on the first of the month. The 1994 classic Four Weddings and a Funeral is also on tap, as well as the 1995 coming-of-age drama Now and Then, and the 1998 Frankie Lyman biography Why Do Fools Fall in Love. On the 20th, check out one of the great Daniel Day-Lewis performances as the ruthless gang leader Bill the Butcher in Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York. The new comedy offerings for August are graced by one classic standout, Groundhog Day, which stars Bill Murray as a man forced to relive the same day over and over again until he gets it right. You can also catch Ice Cube's Are We Done Yet, the Sex in the City movie, the Jack Nicholson Diane Keaton vehicle Something's Gotta Give, and the hilarious Anna Faris starring in The House Bunny. And if none of those are quite weird enough for you, there's Tu Wong Fu Thanks for Everything Julie Newmar, which features Wesley Snipes, John Leguizamo, and Patrick Swayze as three drag queens who embark on the most bizarre road trip ever. 
Aside from the ones already listed, new TV seasons are a bit few and far between in August. The second season of riveting crime series The Sinner, focusing on the brutal crimes committed by a young boy, comes to Netflix in August. The CW's Jane the Virgin will see its fifth season added to the service, and the second season of the History Channel's 14th century drama Nightfall will also be available. Finally, season six of the CW's sci-fi drama The 100 will join the lineup on August 14th. Original comedy offerings kick off with Volume 4 of Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj, in which the comedian uses sly humor to deliver biting social commentary on the state of the U.S. in today's divisive political climate. Also appearing are solo sets from veteran stand-up Sebastian Maniscalco and director-comedian Simon Amstel. Finally, Tiffany Haddish presents They Ready will put the spotlight on six budding comedians performing half-hour sets. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.